I've been teaching population genetics for over 20 years, and confusion about the difference between dominant and advantageous comes up every semester. Honestly, one of the most common sources of mistakes and confusion for students in my evolutionary biology class is about dominant alleles versus advantageous alleles. The technical term dominant means that individuals with one copy of an allele have the same phenotype as individuals with two copies. In other words, heterozygotes look like the homozygote for the dominant allele. Meanwhile, the term advantageous signifies that individuals with this allele tend to have higher fitness than individuals with other alleles. These two terms are often confused. I think this is mainly because the non-technical meanings for these words are similar, and these terms are often introduced at around the same time in an evolutionary biology course. Advantageous is fairly straightforward, so let's focus on the term dominant and some related ones in more detail to clarify things. It's helpful to contrast dominant alleles with recessive ones. First, let's look at a specific example of a dominant allele. The most common example taught in biology classes is Mendel's pea plants, where the capital T allele is dominant and the lowercase t allele is recessive. Both the capital T capital T and capital T lowercase t genotypes result in the tall phenotype. Only the lowercase t lowercase t genotype results in the short phenotype. The homozygotes for the tall or short alleles are tall or short. The heterozygotes resemble the homozygote for the dominant allele, which in this case is the tall allele. Another way of saying this is that a single copy of the dominant allele causes the dominant phenotype, and that the terms dominant and recessive specify what the heterozygous phenotype is. An important thing to notice is that this has nothing to do with fitness. Maybe shorter plants are better. To know whether a phenotype, such as tall or short, is advantageous or deleterious, we need to know more about the environment and lifestyle of the organism. Better terms we could use, but don't, include expressive versus shy, or manifested versus suppressed, or something else. Unfortunately, we're stuck with the terms that people have been using for 100 years and it's too late to change now. Let's look at this whole dominant and recessive scenario in a bit more abstract and general way. Remember that the key thing is that dominant and recessive specify the heterozygous phenotype. Let's look at this example, showing three genotypes for the capital A and lowercase a alleles where the capital A allele is dominant and the lowercase a allele is recessive. This would result in the capital A homozygous individuals and the heterozygotes having the capital A phenotype, whereas the lowercase a homozygotes have the lowercase a phenotype. This is actually the same scenario as the pea plants from earlier, if the capital A allele symbolizes the tall allele and the lowercase a allele symbolizes the short allele. At this point I'd like to point out that while the use of capital and lowercase letters to denote dominant and recessive alleles is very common in textbooks and classes, in the real world things are more complicated. Many alleles aren't fully dominant or recessive, so the capitalization doesn't make sense. Also, in scientific papers, the alleles are usually named with a multiple letter acronym describing the phenotype or genotype instead of just single letters. Single letters are great for learning, but don't assume too much from the capitalization unless you've been told that capital letters denote dominance. For our next example, let's look at a scenario showing three genotypes with the capital A and lowercase a alleles where the capital A allele is recessive and the lowercase a allele is dominant. In this case, the heterozygotes would have the lowercase a phenotype. You won't see the alleles capitalized this way very often, but I wanted to include this to reiterate the point that you shouldn't assume that capitalization matters unless you're in a class where that's the norm or you've been told that that's the case. For the last example, sometimes neither allele is dominant or recessive, and the heterozygotes have a different phenotype from either homozygote, usually some kind of intermediate phenotype. This would be something like plants that can be tall, short, and medium, or flowers that can be red, white, and pink. When this happens, we term these alleles codominant. You may also see the term additive used instead of codominant, but that tends to be used mainly by quantitative geneticists who are rare within the genetics community because that kind of genetics involves lots and lots of math. Codominant is used more often. Obviously for this situation, the use of capital letters is problematic because it may make people think that one of the alleles is dominant when really both alleles are codominant. Note that this entire time I've been talking about dominance, but not about fitness. We could ask the question, which allele or genotype is the best one? The answer is, who knows? It could be either the capital A or lowercase a allele, depending on the fitness values for each phenotype. In fact, sometimes the intermediate phenotype is best. Maybe medium height plants are the best trade-off between getting sunlight and getting eaten. Maybe bees like pink flowers more than either red or white ones. When this happens, instead of using the term codominant to describe the alleles, we use the term, drumroll please, overdominant. Ugh. This just adds to the confusion between dominant and advantageous. I wish I could go back in time and have an angry conversation with whoever decided on these terms. But that's not possible, so these are the ones we're stuck with. 
So why the constant confusion about these terms? First, English speakers tend to associate the word dominant with strong or good, and the word recessive seems weak or bad. It was a bad choice for the early geneticists to choose these terms instead of ones with more neutral everyday meanings. In fact, this confusion is actually why Hardy and Weinberg derived their result way back in the 1920s. They came up with their equations for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to show how alleles that are dominant would not take over a population unless they were also advantageous. These two traits are distinct. Second, most of the deleterious genetic disorders we know about are recessive. Evolution is better at purging non-recessive alleles from populations, so most of the deleterious alleles that still remain, what we call genetic diseases, are recessive. This tricks people into thinking that all deleterious alleles are recessive, when what's really happening is that deleterious alleles can be dominant, recessive, or co-dominant, but the ones that last and get noticed are the recessive ones. There are a few counterexamples to the genetic disorders being recessive. The neurological disorder Huntington's disease and the hypermobility form of Ehlers-Danlos disease are both dominant. These genetic diseases never skip generations, and most people who have the disease are heterozygotes because the deleterious alleles are fairly rare due to their detrimental effects. Third, many deleterious or knockout mutations are recessive. This can arise when some other protein is responsible for the rate-limiting step in a biochemical pathway. In these cases, heterozygotes only having half the protein may not have an effect on the overall rate of reaction. If half the amount of protein can do the job, then even complete genetic knockout alleles can be recessive. If you're learning population genetics or evolution, take a little time to make sure that the terms dominant and advantageous, recessive and deleterious are distinct in your mind when thinking about genetics. As always, a PDF of this summary screen is available on the Evolution Examples website. If you found this useful, feel free to share it with anyone you know who would benefit from it. Also, like and subscribe to easily find this channel again and see new videos.